At the end of the regular season, NC State was 17 and 14, 9 and 11 in the ACC. The Wolfpack essentially had zero chance to make the NCAA tournament. That was unless they got an automatic bid by winning their conference tourney. The lowest seed ever to win the ACC tournament was Virginia Tech as a seven seed in 2022. I was there to cover the tournament as a Virginia Tech student in Brooklyn, and it was magical. Four straight wins and a buzzer beater on the way to an improbable championship. This year, I made my way up to DC to watch NC State pull off an even more unlikely run as a 10 seed. State won it and made the big dance as an 11 seed in the South region. After five wins in five days, the Wolfpack got four days off before heading to Pittsburgh where in three days, NC State beat 6-seed Texas Tech and 14-seed Oakland to make the Sweet 16. Regardless of how far NC State goes in the NCAA tournament from here, doesn't change the fact that they've pulled off something truly special. Nobody expected the Wolfpack to still be standing now, including me. Kevin Keats was hired at NC State in 2017 after two seasons at UNC Wilmington, where he made the NCAA tournament twice in three years after winning the CAA. Devontae Kaycock from those teams later played in the NBA. It only took one season for Keats to take the Wolfpack to the NCAA tournament, where they lost in the round of 64. That was in 2018. State didn't return to the big dance until 2023 and lost in the round of 64 once again. Heading into this past season, Keats hadn't won a game in the NCAA tournament. State was much better in 2022-23 compared to the year before, but then Keats led State to a losing record in conference play this season. Keats has been able to develop two recruits into the NBA, Darion Sebron and Terquavion Smith. Both went undrafted, but did play minutes in the league. NC State now, they're just simply a group of transfers. The Wolfpack have eight players that averaged over 10 minutes per game. Freshman Dennis Parker Jr. was one of those eight, who I'm pretty familiar with, actually. He's from Richmond, and I covered a game he played in in 2019 when John Marshall lost to Sierra Canyon, who was loaded. It had Bronny James, Zaire Wade, Amari Bailey, Brandon Boston Jr., and Zaire Williams. Williams, who was ineligible at the time. Parker was able to get consistent minutes off the bench for the Wolfpack this season, and he's the only player that averaged over 10 minutes per game that didn't transfer in. DJ Horn has been their top scorer. He had 29 points in the ACC Championship and had 27 points during the first weekend of the NCAA Tournament. Horn is from Raleigh, but he had to make stops at Illinois State and Arizona State before playing for Kevin Keats. The biggest name during the Wolfpack's run has been Big DJ Burns. He's listed at 6'9", 275 pounds, which feels conservative. He scored in double digits in every postseason game this year and is coming off of 24 points in the round of 32 after playing a career high 42 minutes. Burns was at Tennessee and Winthrop before a landing in Raleigh. I actually stayed at the same hotel as Winthrop back in 2020 when I was touring Virginia Tech and Burns was there, although I can't really say I knew who he was at the time. Then Jaden Taylor was at Butler. I watched plenty of Casey Marcel at Virginia. Muhammad Diara was at Missouri. Ben Middlebrooks played for Clemson and Michael O'Connell transferred from Stanford. Yeah, uh, Kevin Keats has made the most of the transfer portal. It's easy to look at the NC State roster now and see a lot of good players that have had an impact in March, but they just weren't that good in the regular season, and that's what makes the run even more special. NC State played four Power 6 schools during its non-conference slate, three of which were from the SEC. The Wolfpack beat Vanderbilt, but lost to BYU, Ole Miss, and number 12, Tennessee. They started off conference play with a dramatic overtime win over Boston College and went on to actually have a good start to ACC play. On January 16th, NC State was 5-1 and one, and its only loss was to North Carolina. Then the Wolfpack lost to Virginia Tech, which happened to be one of two of the Hokies' road wins all season. NC State went on to lose to Virginia in overtime and Syracuse en route to finishing the year 4-10. and 10. Kevin Keats was on the hot seat. NC State finished 10th in the ACC and its only chance of 
making the NCAA tournament was by winning the ACC tournament. The lowest seed to ever do it was Virginia Tech in 2022 as a seven. The Hokies had to win four games in four days. NC State had to win five in five days and did just that. One shot can be the difference in March, and NC State knows that. I watched Michael O'Connell hit a crazy buzzer beater in the ACC semifinal that wouldn't have even been possible if Virginia could have hit a free throw. NC State had to play 15 seed Louisville in the second game of the ACC tournament, and Sky Clark was a man on a mission. He scored 36 points and drilled a three to tie the game with 450 remaining, but Jaden Taylor responded with back-to-back -back threes, and the Wolfpack didn't look back, winning 94-85 to behind 25 points from Casey Morsell. The next day, they had to play 7-seed Syracuse, who NC State lost to twice in the regular season. The Wolfpack rolled. They had four players score 15-plus and won 83-65. to Suddenly, a difficult task was on the horizon in the quarterfinals, 2-seed Duke. Kyle Filipowski had a good day with 28 points and 14 rebounds, but NC State found a way to survive and it Advance. Again, the Wolfpack spread around the scoring with five players in double digits and won 74 to 69. That set up a matchup versus three seed Virginia in the semifinals. Now, I grew up a Virginia fan before going to Virginia Tech, and I still have some feelings for the Hoos, and that two day stretch was unbelievable. Mason Madsen hit the buzzer for Boston College to send the quarterfinal to overtime before Virginia pulled away to win. The next night, it was Michael O'Connell who hit a three at the buzzer to send the game into overtime. Overtime, and NC State won 73-65. to Every good March Madness run needs a little bit of luck, and that was the Wolfpack's moment. To me, it felt like they had the same magic as Virginia Tech in 2022, or Virginia in 2019 when it won the national championship. After four wins in four days, NC State was just one win away from the big dance, but it'd have to come versus rival one seed North Carolina. DJ Horn and DJ Burns were the Wolfpack's best players all season, and they showed up up when the lights were bright. Horn had 29 points and Burns had 20. NC State won 84 to 76 to complete an improbable run to win the ACC championship, one that will not be forgotten for a long time. It was only the second time a double digit seed made the final. NC State did it back in 2007 before losing to North Carolina. The Wolfpack finished the job this time to win the ACC title and Kevin Keats went from on the hot seat to getting a bonus of 400,000 dollar raise and an automatic two-year contract extension. Kevin Keats pulled off a miracle or got lucky. Whatever you think, it doesn't change the fact that it was an incredible run to make the NCAA tournament and they weren't done yet. NC State got an 11 seed in the South region and had to travel up to Pittsburgh for the round of 64 to face six seed Texas Tech and the Wolfpack stayed hot. Four players had 16 plus and Ben Middlebrooks was the unlikely hero with a career high. 21 points. His previous career high was 14, which came against Wake Forest in January. Middlebrooks had 14 in the first half in the 80-67 win over the Red Raiders. NC State moved on to the round of 32 to face number 14 Oakland, who had won the Horizon League and upset three-seed Kentucky as Jack Golke dropped 32 points. Golke followed it up with 22 points versus NC State, and Trey Townsend led the way with 30. 30 but NC State wasn't ready to go home. DJ Burns had 24, and every starter had double-digit points for the Wolfpack. The game went to overtime, where State went on a 9-0 run and put it away. The Wolfpack won 79-73 to make their first Sweet 16 since 2015. The Wolfpack will not stop no matter how tired they are. Watching NC State this March has been absolute cinema, and they aren't done yet. Now, NC State faces two-seed Marquette with a trip to the Elite Eight on the line.